There are some surprise 3 and 0 teams. There are some surprise 0 and 3 teams. Josh, who's the biggest surprise at 3 and 0 and who's the biggest surprise at 0 and 3? I mean, there's two teams I could put into the cons- into the 3 and 0 surprise conversation. It, I think I'll just mention both of them. Obviously, we got to start with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I don't think anybody saw this, but at, by the I same. I told you they would start 3 0. Okay. You were one of the few, I guess. Because um, given their whole quarterback situation and all that, I did not see 3 0 coming for them. But so that is definitely surprised me. And even though I was so high on him two years ago, given how hard he fell off last season and the fact that they brought in a new head coach to replace Pete Carroll, they brought in a new offensive coordinator, Ryan Grubb from Washington. I got to say the Seattle Seahawks are a surprise at 3-0. and um, You can make an argument for the Minnesota Vikings. But I think the Seahawks are more surprising, 3-0. and um, Okay. But in terms of 0-3, Cincinnati's got to be the most surprising one, I would say. But yeah. I, I would agree with you on Cincinnati. Well, let me just say this. I'm not taking any credit away from the Seahawks. They had a great start. They're 3-0. I did not expect them to start 3-0. I thought they dropped one of their first three games. But let me ask you, Josh, who have the Seahawks played? That's true. They played Denver. Um, who did they play week two? New England. And they should have lost that game. They blocked a kick or they would have lost. Yeah, and then they played Miami. With, by the way, and Miami's a joke. Miami may be, the, Miami may be without two of the worst team in football. They can't move the ball. And now Skylar Thompson turned. They were playing Tim Boyle in the second half. The Dolphins might lose to the Titans this week. That That is the worst Monday Night Football game of all time. That is an unwatchable game. Thank God the Seahawks and Lions start at 15 And thank God. God, I can do something 45 minutes before that because I I don't and again I can watch bad football. That might be worse than Zach Wilson and the Jets against the Raiders last year. Remember the Raiders Vikings game last year that was like 0-0 to the fourth quarter or whatever it was. I said I couldn't take my mind off it because it was such a to me it was captivating football to see who could be worse. These two teams stink. I mean they stink. Do you remember that Jets Dolphins game a couple years ago that was terrible? I, it was in the final week of the season. That might have been why. Because it was the final week of the yeah. year. So I don't remember and it. I think the um, Dolphins were trying to get into the playoffs. Um, okay. <laughs> so back to the task at hand. I think the most surprising 3 0 team is the Minnesota Vikings. Because. You said you could make a case for them. I'm going to make a case for them. Week one, they beat the New York Giants. whoop de freaking do Week two, Josh, who did they beat? A healthy minus Christian McCaffrey, San Francisco 49er team. And not only did they beat them, they made Brock Purdy see ghosts. And by the way, who did they just beat last Sunday? And not only did they beat this team, they beat them badly. And they made this guy who didn't see ghosts at all last year see ghosts. Your man in Houston, C.J. Stroud. Not only that, but who outside of Josh Allen right now, in my opinion, through three weeks is the MVP of the National Football League? Sam freaking Darnold out of USC, because I said going into this year, I said the Vikings were going to be the best fourth seed in their division. Well, they're not, they're not the best fourth seed. I'll tell you right now, they got a big game this week against Green Bay. I'm going out on a limb. If the Minnesota Vikings go into Green Bay, whether it's Jordan Love or whether it's Malik Willis, if they get a W, if the Minnesota Vikings start 4-0, you can mark it down right now. They're going to win the NFC North. 
The Detroit Lions might have something to say about well, that. The Lions have not looked that impressive to me. They barely beat Arizona. They finally figured out how to run the ball. And by the way, you can make the argument that if the Rams just didn't get worn out in the fourth quarter, the Rams had them beat. Yeah, but I don't think we can just dismiss the Detroit Lions like that. Well, no, but you can't. But have you seen what these Vikings, I mean, they're lighting up the scoreboard and they're shutting down people. Oh, and yeah. Look, Ryan right. Flores is out to get another head coaching job. He is becoming this year's version of what Jim Schwartz was last year, which is the best assistant coach in football. Yeah. Um, Brian Flores is playing on a master class in terms of disguising defenses. You think you're getting one look from the Vikings? And it turns out to be something completely different. Uh, so so uh, let me real quick talk about Pittsburgh. Because let, let me break down the schedule for you going into the year. Week one, nobody had them beating Atlanta for some reason. I never understood it. I always had them beating Atlanta. That was Arthur Smith's roster. Arthur Smith knew the whole team. Week two, I thought was going to be a little bit more of a dicey game. You're going in Denver. You're going in that altitude. Bo Nix, rookie quarterback. I thought at best it's a 50-50 game, but I thought they could pull it out. And then the Charger game, I said, Chargers going west to east coast two times in a row. Chargers were going to start 2-0 and with two easy victories. Harbaugh was going to suffer his first loss in Pittsburgh. Now, I had them losing this game initially to Indianapolis when I did my schedule prediction and had them going 3-1. and one. But I got to tell you something. Anthony Richardson, if you're a Colts fan, I feel so bad for you. So, Josh, you had the Indianapolis Colts making the playoffs. And I am here to tell you, I backed you. I wanted to believe in the Indianapolis Colts. I've watched, I've watched Will Levis. I've watched Carson Wentz. I've watched Bailey freaking Zappy. I've watched Zach Wilson. There may be no more frustrating quarterback that I've ever watched. I, and I'll include Deshaun Watson in this than Anthony Richardson. And I'll tell you why. The potential is there, man. He can make the most difficult throw you ever see in your life. But he can't complete a two-yard check down. I, I've never seen a quarterback miss the easy throws, yet he makes the most difficult ones. Yeah, you go back to that Houston game. He was throwing absolute gems, like, deep down the field. And then you turn around and you look at the Chicago game and you're like, okay, the pass is wide open in the end zone. What are you doing? Um, so I like this comment. If the Seahawks win another game, Josh will cut his hair off. I don't know about that. Uh, but... I mean, you look at the 0-3 teams. You've got Cincinnati there. That's surprising. Tennessee, 0-3. Not surprising. They're a mess. Um, and Tennessee and it, Cincinnati are the only 0-3 teams in the division. Jacksonville. No, Jacksonville. I'm sorry. Jacksonville. Jacksonville may be actually more. What What the hell has happened to Trevor Lawrence? By the way, Doug Peterson's going to be coaching in Kansas City again by week six because he ain't making it through. Because in my opinion, if they lose to Houston this week and they go to 0-4, season's over. You might as well pack up shop and start looking for another quarterback and another coach. Trevor Lawrence has turned into 2020 cards of wins. And I don't get it. Like, the Jaguars just gave him a massive contract extension, and you turn around and play like, this? I, I, by the way, they should have had Miami be week one. They had a beat, and obviously that fumble by ETM might have changed the whole season. They could have beat the Browns in week two if, if it wasn't for that safety that uh, 95 caused. And then obviously last night, oh my God. Um, did the Warriors even know Buffalo? Where do they think they were? Hawaii? I, I don't know. I, that game was. Unwatchable. That game wasn't even competitive. And remember, they beat Buffalo in London last year. Yeah. And Josh Allen, or no, I'm sorry, Josh Hines Allen had a great game against, well, Josh Allen. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think Cincinnati is going to be fine. Like we talked about, I think they bounced back against Carolina. Jacksonville, I, I actually, I'm ashamed to say it, I picked the Jacks to win last night. I thought the Jags season was on the line last night. 
when you come out like that, you're zero and two. How we did not see many zero and two teams on Sunday play bad. We saw Baltimore play with urgency, and even though the Bengals lost, we saw offensive urgency. They couldn't stop a nosebleed, but we saw offensive urgency out of Cincinnati. We saw a Jacksonville team last night that, to me, I'm just gonna say it. They look like they already quit. Carolina, even Carolina. <laughs> I told you, Bryce Young was the issue. I, and he told him, can we move the ball? I mean, Jesus. I mean, I wouldn't say Bryce Young is the only issue with Carolina. Wait, listen, Carolina's got issues. But I got telling you throughout the offseason, they have some players. They're not total garbage. I, I, I really believe that. Okay. Um, We'll see. 